Thus, yes. Hello. Thank you for coming out to the exciting demo theater to see uh, Morph Labs talk about our mCloud solutions. Both of you, thank you for coming. <laughs> and because there's only two of you, if you get up, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> Unless you want to get up and come closer and you know get you know. I may actually have Here, a good seat right there. Come sit there. on the front row. <laughs> my name is Christopher Ado. I'm uh, the Morph Labs CTO. It's my and, uh, Andre well, Hunter. I'm Hunter Neild. I'm the uh, director of development for Morph Labs as well. So we'll talk for a few minutes about uh, Morph Labs and what mCloud is. Uh, try and keep it brief, and then Hunter will walk through the uh, our UI. Um, our background: we are a uh, venture-funded company. We've been around for actually about five years now. We're located in Manhattan Beach. We uh, have offices in Tokyo, and Singapore, and the Philippines. And we are delivering a fully integrated uh, infrastructure as a service platform based on OpenStack. Um, we've been involved with OpenStack and uh, founding foundation members since the beginning. And our mission, I guess, is to provide the lowest total cost of ownership for a highly performant, highly scalable OpenStack installation uh, targeting both enterprises and service providers. We, uh, what makes us unique is our hyperdense uh, architecture. So we are always focused on finding the best balance of price and performance. I get out of the way of the screen here. <clears throat> um, since obviously with any cloud solution, you can make it a ridiculously performant if you pour a ton of money in it, uh, but starts to make not a lot of sense if you've spent a fortune and you can only host 10 or 15 really fast VMs. So we, um, we try and find the best balance of price and performance. Uh, by combining the OpenStack uh, as the foundation and our unique uh, dashboard on top of that and using enterprise SSDs and partnering with different hardware vendors to work out the best platform for the solution. Um, so we started with a what was called the mCloud Helix. We partnered with Dell. This is a 2U box, a C6220, and um, four-year cost of ownership was about $115,000. And it was pretty great. This is about a year ago. We were one of the first people with a uh, enterprise targeted um, Essex solution that was actually getting traction in the enterprise marketplace. And since then, we've moved on um, and kind of restructured into using 1U building blocks. So uh, our solution essentially allows you to build out uh, an OpenStack environment with the 1U building block. So add as many compute nodes as you want, add additional uh, controller nodes for resiliency and uh, high availability, and then storage nodes are based on uh, using Nexenta. So for block storage, you can scale out your, the block storage for your environment pretty easily. Um, and the price performance uh, actually does really well. We outperform uh, using Unix Bench on a loaded environment compared to Rackspace and AWS, we're significantly score better than uh, with Unix Bench, um, pretty high IOPS. And the suggested retail price of $40 actually costs the service provider around $15, um, which they can turn around and, and sell that for a lot more, or match Amazon and, and significantly beat Amazon on performance. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Hunter and he can walk through the, um, Walk through the UI. Oops. Going slow. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And if you want to go screen, maybe. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Um, so. What we've done with our solution is we've actually uh, built a, a custom dashboard, so something that uh, operates in a similar way to Horizon, but we found that we've got additional things that, we've, that uh, our customers would request, and, and working on a, a life cycle that is uh, something that we can adapt to uh, much faster than the, the six monthly release cycles of, uh, of the typical OpenStack. So the other things that we, uh, we include in this for, say, our service provider customers is um, the ability to do billing, to be able to integrate in very, very short order um, to different billing providers like Stripe to actually be running up and charging your customers with, you know, within a week almost. It's uh, incredibly quick and 
once the hardware is installed, its configuration, a little bit of setup with bank account details, and away you go for uh, for an installation. So the uh, the dashboard that we have for um, for demonstration today, I'll uh, try and set up a user for us. And we can just give it an account. It's four two four two. It's four two. And then, yeah, four times. So if I'm as I set up a user here, um, we have the ability to be able to configure this as well. Um, so that uh, a service provider can choose to say if they do or don't want billing and be able to have sign up for their accounts but not necessarily um, enter credit card details. Um, and uh, we'll go through and quickly add the details. And so, uh, fairly straightforward sign up, that you, and users then will have access to the system and to be able to use it and to start up resources and everything else. So, while this goes through, if I can. And so, once we log in, we, uh, we uh, then have the ability to be able to. Um, start VMs uh, to monitor their health um, and also to keep track of uh, billing and other things that go through with that. So um, if we go through and create a project, or if we've created a project, if we create a VM to go along with it, we can uh, then go through and get an idea of particular costs that are going there for particular sizes um, and starting up uh, a number of other things that uh, Of course, I need to give it a name as well. So, and so as this uh, this instance boots, we can apply all the other things that we typically would find that uh, um, you would uh, you would associate it. Um, in this case, um, floating IPs and security groups, um, and uh, images and snapshots that be can be. Uh, um, taken from the running images and uh, and finally at least in the case of this particular project adding collaborators who will be able to also share the responsibility administration in the, uh, the user interface itself so um, the one thing that's missing from our demo here at the moment is volumes um, it's really just in this case uh, disabled for um, this environment but uh, we do offer the ability to be able to start up volumes, um, snapshot, and uh, all the other things that you typically expect from an OpenStack installation. Um, so from here, that if we uh, can then go back to our monitoring tab and see here that we've got uh, at least showing the health of uh, the one instance that's running in there. If I created a second one and go through there, then I can um, create an instance. and then get more of an idea of uh, how the monitoring works in this regard. So it scales up showing the health of these, uh, these instances as, actually, as they're running. So if I go back across to the, uh, the monitoring section and drill down, you can see here now that I have two instances running and can drill down further down in there to be able to get health of uh, the CPU, uh, the network I.O. that's going through there, and. Uh, Lock devices if they're uh, if they're attached. So, um, high-level administration applying actions to a particular running instance will be um, is possible here as well to be able to um, do quick uh, quick work on a running VM. Um, and so, um, drilling further down, um, usage can be then retrieved and get an idea. In this case, we haven't really had enough to be particularly to be billed but it will give you an idea of uh, running costs, and then once your billing period comes up at the end of a month, 
um, an invoice will be sent and charged to credit cards and things like that. So um, that really covers the um, the demo that we've got today. Um, Chris, is there anything you'd like to I, I think you did a great job of showing off the UI. And I actually don't have anything to add. Do we have any, any questions? Anyone? Yes, please. With, correct, we're not with this one. Um, basically, this environment is targeted to, towards reselling Unix VMs, and uh, we are not, for the providers that we work with that use, uh, that are serving Windows, um, they basically have to craft, we have to craft specific Windows images for that, and because uh, we're not deploying on top of, um, what's the, Windows hyper hypervisor. This environment doesn't have any hypervisor compute nodes in it. Um, so because of the licensing issues with the demo environments, we don't deploy Windows VMs. Um, and, and the warning there is basically if you, you could upload a Windows image into Glance through this interface, uh, but if, if you weren't using the kind of modified, the cloud init plugin for Windows, it wouldn't ingest that password. Mm -hmm. If you were, if you did have a Windows image set up for, with essentially cloud init capability, it would pull in that password, mm -hmm. and it would it would update the admin password from the instance metadata or the image metadata, or from the metadata server. Mm -hmm. That's the right phrase. Yeah. With the question is, what do we use for the monitoring, or where are we pulling that? So, sure. Or this one? It's pulling it out of uh, from KVM. Yep. And it uh, gets stored on the on in Rabbit, and then dis is it stat D that's displaying it, or what do we? So the Graphy? the data itself is stored in Graphite, so it's accessible yes. for uh, for users who don't necessarily want to be able to consume it or don't have to consume it through the, uh, the dashboard itself. Um, so it's available on uh, other ports and, and accessible there. So we don't inject any agents into the particular instances. That's all really taken from the hypervisor and, and the data that's actually returned there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all.